information about who they're looking at. Uh, the company, Scott Konung, uh, says it can be used in war zones to assist people helping with international aid relief operations. Managing director is Jonathan Cole. Hello there, Jonathan. How are you? Hello, Phil. Um, it's one of those moments where everybody wants to uh, wear your glasses. <laughs> yes, we've, uh, we, we have noticed that as we've gone around and been doing software testing. It's creating a lot of interest and a lot of excitement. OK, so for the uninitiated, you better tell us more about Google Glass initially, just to sort of put it into context. Google Glass is a new concept that Google started talking at about about a year ago. They have created a pair of glasses, which is not anything new, but their pair of glasses comes complete with what I can only describe as a smartphone embedded into the top. So while you're walking around with your hands free, you can actually see and interact with a effectively a phone computer um, straight in front of your eye. And, and it's voice activated? It works on voice. It also has a touch panel to the side, so you can still use a sort of intuitive smartphone type interface. All right, OK. So um, and, and it's one of those things where the brain does uh, a lot of the work for you, because obviously it's there in the corner of your eye, but it, you're able to see what's going on and, uh, you know, you can surf the Internet on it and things like that. Exactly. Yeah, OK. But this is where your development comes in. What have you developed for Google Glass? And it, it obviously has real uses here, especially in war zones. Indeed, Phil. We've been working since we got our glass three weeks ago to look at how we could adapt and develop some of the software we've already got deployed in international development environments in Africa to potentially take advantage of the fact that Google Glass is hands-free. So we've been working to, if you like, remove the facial recognition components of some of our software and move that onto Google Glass. The idea being that it enables the wearer to easily identify people in front of them and in the humanitarian aid and sort of war zone environments that's got a huge range of applications from checkpoints for security forces being able to tell whether or not the person in front of them is hostile or friendly or just simply unknown right through to refugee camps and humanitarian aid delivery where it potentially could help assist with identifying and ensuring that the aid that is provided by the UK taxpayers and by others is actually getting to the people who need it most within the camps and is being fairly distributed. That's, that's really quite something, isn't it? I mean, I imagine you could also, I'm sure you're, you're thinking of uh, softer targets, I mean, you know, in, in as much as uh, perhaps not in war zones, but uh, any border patrol would love to have that, even at Heathrow, wouldn't they, if they were wearing glasses? Because immediately they would be able to say, friend of those people coming through, uh, you know, because a lot of it is done by facial recognition now. Isn't it? Indeed, biometrics are an increasing part of the way that... Um governments both in the UK and abroad are managing and detecting people. One of the big advantages of biometrics is it takes away the pressure from the individual who's actually stood in front of someone rather than comparing a photograph to the person in front of you and trying to decide whether or not it's the same person. Actually there is some very sophisticated algorithms that we're using um, that are adopted and used by very major companies worldwide now to actually really provide a pretty definitive answer each time. Well, what's been uh, the reaction and how has it worked in, in, in reality? Well, in reality, as I said, we've only had this for three weeks. Yeah. The, the, under, the underpinning biometric software is currently running in a major programme in Nigeria to support mm. a public works programme and it's being used to help identify the beneficiaries of the programme, the people doing the work, to make sure that they come to work and the right people get paid at the end of the day because some of the issues that exist in development or developing countries are about how you actually ensure that there's an integrated process so the person who does the work gets paid, somebody who doesn't do the work doesn't get paid, and that other people don't suddenly appear and take the money out of the system somewhere in the middle. Yeah, so that's a rather hot topic at the moment, isn't it? Um, what about the expense of this? I mean, I have no idea how much a, a, a pair of Google Glass glasses are. Well, at the moment, they are, as you may have guessed, very, very rare. There are a small number available, predominantly in the US, that have been released through something called an Explorer program to developers to help, like we are, explore some of the capabilities and possibilities for software. So at the moment, they cost around one and a half, sorry, one and a half thousand dollars. So that's about a thousand pounds in UK money to buy. And um, as I say, they're not generally available. What Google are saying is that when they are put on public sale, they the price will come down a long way, and they're anticipating that it'll be around the same price as a smartphone. And the sort of industry experts, leaders, who oh, the rumor mill, as best I would yes. probably describe it, is saying that they're probably going to be somewhere between two and six hundred dollars, so sort of two hundred to five hundred pounds. Right. Okay. Um, and obviously, you know, the apps are going to be quite good. Is there any chance to have a look at them? Just because that you've got them in front of you, I don't, I don't want to. 
Um, of course, yeah, yeah, they're out, they're out. it's like a, a normal pair of glasses, but um, one side is there's a, there's a bit more technology you can see there right on the right hand side. So basically, it's over your right eye. I'm gonna have to move my headphones off just basically just so I can put the glasses on. I'll then do that. All right, straight away. It's amazing how quickly your eye adjusts to the fact that you've got a little screen right in the corner and then you suddenly can look up. And that, it is amazing, isn't it? It really is quite something. Uh, so, uh, and, and also what's amazing as well, it's writing down uh, in front of me what I'm saying, which you've, is you've rather unnerving there. <laughs> <laughs> you've but, currently got it set, um, Phil, to actually do one of the things that it does with voice recognition, which is you start any voice command in the glass by saying, yes. OK, glass. And at the moment it's saying, OK, glass, Google. So it's actually doing a Google search and it's trying to find the... Um, a search term from the words you're speaking. Okay, all right, so, okay, glass, Google, M25. Yeah, it's, it's, it's now searching that. Can't reach Google right now. Okay, fair I don't enough. think we've got an internet connection yeah, in, your, I, I, that, in your studio. That's the field. joy of uh, the studio, but it's, it is the most amazing thing. Uh, yeah, there are the others, because uh, they are rather rare, uh, but yes, uh, and, and just finally, I mean, looking at this, I mean, this is, I, I imagine, as we were saying there, uh, one of those moments where a company like you, it's just perfect, isn't it? Because you can come up with so many applications for something as amazing as those Google Glass glasses. Indeed, and we're working really actively with our clients and partners across the international development environment to try and explore and work with them to identify where this can have real benefit. I was only talking a couple of days ago with um, a company we work with, MZN International, about the potential that this might have in humanitarian disasters. Um, Chris from MZM was telling me about the um, challenges he had when he was in Haiti after the um, natural disasters there and actually trying to go around with a handheld computer camera machine to actually log and analyse the information for saying what he actually needed was his hands free to be able to render first aid. What he needed was the computer to be able to take the pictures that he needed for the wider analysis, but also potentially one of the things we're exploring to provide that basic first aid information so that he actually knew what to do. Well, I, I'm sure we'll uh, come back to you and see how you're getting on, but whatever happens, it's going to be an amazing development. Uh, good to meet you. Thank you very much for the, the for coming in there, Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan Cole there with uh, that amazing development. Uh, watch out for Google Glass glasses and uh, that biometric facial recognition system. It's now uh, 22 minutes away from 10 past five. BBC Radio Berkshire. Travel.